got you. Yeah, they said it's all on you. Yeah, yeah. I just told him take the wheel. I'm just walking in my purpose, on purpose. On purpose. I got the faith, I know I'm worth it. But take my hand to peace, I'm sinking deep and really on the stretch of service. It ain't perfected, but it's perfect. I just told him take the wheel, I'm just walking in my purpose, on purpose. I got the faith, I know I'm worth it. But take my hand to peace, I'm sinking deep and really on the stretch of service. It ain't perfected, but it's perfect. I'm a man on a mission. I'm so today with us on Store Talk, it's an honor to have a special guest. Um, here on Store Talk, we walk in our purpose, and today's guest is definitely doing that. Um, a great young lady came from a great family, um, very athletic, you know, into sports, um, just into doing all the right thing. And as right now, it just seems like you know God is uh, bringing up and raising up people and growing them closer to Him to be able to get what. He's trying to say through them and using them. Today's guest we have with us the one, the only, Miss Jayla Johnson. How you doing today? I'm blessed and highly favored. How are you? Yes, yes. I was excited about this interview. Um, people um, in today's society, they're definitely going through things. They're definitely needing to know um, that God got them. They definitely need to exercise their faith. They definitely need to have that place, that relationship. Have you always had that relationship? with God, with faith, uh, with your family? How did this happen and what's making you want to tap into it more as of now? Um, well, I've always been a believer of God, always. But, you know, as a kid, you know, your mom tell you to wake up on Sunday, we going to church. But when I was younger, I never really understood what it meant to be a follower of God in itself. But then as I get, as I got older and as I started going through real life things, I'm like, oh my God, life is hard. So then... I was always looking for other outlets. I was looking for like confinement in people and places and things, but I could never find that like, okay, I'm still feeling these type of ways. So then going through college kind of, it didn't really like hinder my relationship, but I I didn't really take it as seriously as I, as I should have. And mm -hmm. then the last um, few months of my college career, my cousin got killed. So that kind of put a lot of things into perspective and healing with that. And I'm like, okay, God, I know God is real. I know he does everything for a purpose, but what is this purpose for? So then as I started to heal from that, I started to realize that God is all, and I can't question what he has for me. Yeah, It's ways for him. So after it's kind of relieving and it kind of helped me heal from his death for some, yeah. I learned that God does things without you even knowing why. And when I was grieving, he kind of showed me like life is real and life is hard, but I always got to have you at the end of the day. So mm -hmm. now as we're living in this world and it's getting crazier and crazier and cra crazier, I'm just like, I, the only thing that is getting me through right now is believing that at the end of the day, I'm going to enter the kingdom. So it's just like, it's relationship over religion. I don't really, believe in like a religion it's always okay as long as you're good with god then everything else will fall into place yeah and that, and that's a, that's great that you said that because a lot of times we were taught or we learned from people yeah. that was taught wrong so they right. doing this stuff the wrong way being right. more religion you can't come to church with this you can't do this instead of right. getting that relationship to be able to know god and i'm glad that you said that God is showing you even through a situation because that's what he'll use people or a situation to allow your relationship to grow and for God to get the glory. Cause you know, man, I couldn't get through this, but God, you know, you would be able to see that. Um, how do you personally define faith? Um, that's a good question. So my shirt right here is say faith over, or what does it say? Faith over fear. And mm. I, watching this sermon online, his name is pastor Philip Anthony Mitchell. And he has put, a lot of things into perspective for me. And he, one thing he talks about is like faith and how um, worry and fear treat that as a sin. Because at the end of the day, if you're worrying about where my next paycheck gonna come or where, who, who really likes me and who does all these things, then that means that you're not trusting in God. So I use faith as like, okay, I know at the end of the day, I'm going through this again. Like I'm going through this for a reason because I have faith that God has a different plan for me, but I yeah. can't through that plan until he shows me the trials and tribulations that I have to go through. So in order to 
fulfill my full purpose, I have to go through the worst time because that def if I if God showed me right here on the sky like that you're going to go through this this and this and that defeats the whole point of faith. Faith is when you might not know what's going to happen tomorrow, but at the end of the day, I know God has. Yeah, and, and you said another uh, another key thing too. A lot of times we go through trials and tribulation. God already know that we're going right. to get through it, but you still got to go through that test. Right. You still got to show up. And you mentioned something on your post. Um, You said something about worrying. Worrying should be treated as a sin. It's something that is say something similar like that in the Bible, because if you're worrying, you're not giving it to God. So now you allowing the enemy to come in and right. to uh, idle mind is the devil's playground. Now you worrying, now you stressing, you thinking all that instead of just giving it to God. You know, he said, cash show cares and concerns to me because he care, you know, in our weakness, his strength will be known. So what can you say to the young people that are worrying and they're allowing fear to come in? What would you be able to say to that? I would first say put down them dang on phones, number one. Put down the social media, put down the phones, because I've taken a break. I I haven't been on, like, Instagram and Snapchat for, like, a year or two now, and that has really helped me because I've learned that social media portrays this false reality. So these kids, they got their phones out. they like, oh, she has this, this, and this. This is what I need. But if you just put God first, then everything else will fall into place. Stop worshiping these singers and these I don't I don't want to be or I want to be sexy red I want to be young boy stuff like that you can't idolize these people because at the end of the day they're not going to save you and for this generation I feel like it's hard for them because nobody takes anything serious now you see like something happens this generation is just it's not serious so I don't think that people really understand like what's really going on right now and they're still young I, I wasn't like that when I was 13 I was talking about on my next game, what shoes I'm about to get. But as you, there's like, there's a choice that you have to make and you can't let your circumstances or where you are in life dictate your relationship with God. It's never too early or too late to build that relationship. So like I said, first thing, put down them dang old phones. And number two, just, just give it a try. I mean, like what's the worst yeah. thing that at the end of the day, if, I don't think God is going to steer you wrong. So if you just try like, okay, instead of social media for five minutes, I can read the Bible for five minutes. It's just those little switches like that. I've had to learn that. I'm like, dang, I'm scrolling on social media, but I ain't read my Bible today, you know? So just little switches like that. Yeah. Can you name a, a time where you were worrying or you were, you know, kind of not really trusting in God and then you start trusting and he came through and showed you like, daughter, I got you. Um, recently, actually, um, me and my sister, we, we weren't actually, I'll use the, my cousin example. Um, when he passed away, I was, I was angry at God. I was like, why would you take somebody so young? Cause he was only 17 when he died. So I'm like, okay, why would you take somebody so young? Like why, what was the purpose of this? And as I've learned, I don't think it was necessarily that he took him to be like, um deceiving or like angry at me but I think he was trying to tell me that and I work with kids and I've learned this dealing with kids is people go through things that they how do I say this um you never know what somebody's going through at the end of the day like these kids a lot of these kids go through imagine unimaginable things but yet they're still striving and they're still growing and I've learned from kids as well so it's just I don't know it's just life itself is a struggle yeah. life is is changing every day there's things going on every day and I kind of worry like okay am I good enough for this am I good enough for that but at the end of the day I know that like I said earlier God is preparing me for something greater so regardless if I lose friends families whatever at the end of the day i know all this is happening for a reason so i've kind of just put i don't even worry no more if god because if this is what god want me to do then that's what he gonna do if not i gotta yeah. let it yeah because elevation requires separation as well because like you said being able to accept it um mm -hmm. how do you maintain to trust in god's plan during a challenging and uncertain time 
Like, what what would you do if you saying I'm doing all this? I'm I'm in my word. I'm building my relationship with God, and then something happened. Would you stay firm, or are you going to start thinking and worrying? What are you thinking about? Like you said, God's mercy is is so sufficient. Right. So without that, we perfect. But sometimes we want to do everything right. What would you do, or what have you doing when you deal with challenging situations? Um, honestly, I just when I'm feeling that like that devil in my ear, like you're not good enough, or you're you're I don't know why you're going through this, blah blah blah. I just continue to stand strong on that because I take that as God or the devil knows that I'm one of God's strongest soldiers. So therefore, he's trying to manipulate what I'm or like what's going on so in order to like stay strong on that I've watched I've um cut out like the music I listen to I've cut off like a lot of artists I listen to just that like one change helps me like my mind just calm down um reading the bible obviously listening to sermons and stuff just surrounding myself with like godly energy it's important with like the people you talk to the people you're surrounded by um, I use discernment for a lot of that. And I discernment is like how you judge people in situations. So I've tried to like judge, okay, I know this person might not be the best for me, but at the end of the day, I can learn something from them. So it's just about like, I don't know. I just, I'm just at the point of now where it's like, if God wants it to happen, then it's going to happen. If he doesn't yeah. want it, remove it. So even though I don't know the full end of it, that's just, that's kind of what I get by. And at the end of the day, if I die tomorrow, I know I'm entering the kingdom and nothing on earth is worth going to hell for. Yeah. So and yeah. It, it makes me think um you're a standout athlete. You know how you trust what the coach say. You don't know what's gonna go on, but right. you listen to him. You got a game plan in. You like, I hope this works, but you practicing, you executing it, yep. you are going through it with your teammates, you know, getting prepared for that game. So it, it, it just puts me in the mind of that because we don't know what tomorrow brings, but we can continue to trust. What role does self-reflection play in your spiritual growth? Oh, I have to self-reflect every single day. Cause when I was younger. I don't, I wouldn't say I was, a jer I was a jerk. I'm not gonna lie. I was a jerk. I didn't, I never really cared about other people's feelings, honestly. And I was always stuck in like my own way. So as I got older, I had to realize what I'm putting out and what I'm doing to people is not right. And that's not how God wants me to live. So I have to, I literally had to like self-reflect for like a week straight and say like, why am I not getting any blessings? Like, is it me? And I had to sit down, actually, like, look myself in the mirror and say, like, what is wrong with you? And um, I did go to therapy for a little bit. And my therapist taught me, like, everything that you've gone through, you have a reason for. And it wasn't necessarily you. It was just your environment and your circumstances. And I've also learned that with kids. And that's what I'm trying to tell them. Like, you can't, you don't have to be the product of your environment. If you really want to be this person that you want to be, you can do it. Don't let anybody hold you back. Don't let any circumstance hold you back. So that's kind of what I had to realize, like looking myself in the mirror every single day. Like, okay, at the end of the day, every day, I'm like, okay, did I have to say this to that person? Or did I have to react in this way? Was this cool? Like it's self-reflection, self-reflection, I think more people need to do because if you're not aware of what you're doing, then you, you're never going to be able to change. So yeah. I had that the hard way because karma was real for me like I wasn't getting I feel like I wasn't getting any positivity so I had to look myself I was like okay this has to be me so yeah. what could you say to the youth and I know you got um, a passion and um, a heart for the youth as well what would you say to them those that might be balanced yeah I want to serve God I want to follow him but yeah I wonder what my friends would say or I don't want to do it out loud you know and it says that we're not supposed to be ashamed you know and even sometimes when we were younger you know I found myself at different times moments not really boasting and being proud right. with it, but you know young and growing up what would you say to the youth if they was to struggle with that or they may be dealing with that um honestly I would say the hardest part of getting connected with God is like you have to there's going to be certain things that you might not agree with God like gang like I've had to lose friends that I never would have expected I'm like God why would you like what what did they do to me but at the end you realize not everybody is for your life but you're you're meant to learn different things from people but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're supposed to be in your life for full time and I think this youth 
like I said, this generation and like the social media aspect is hindering the way that these kids think. They don't think that they, every, they think everybody is their friend. They think that there's no wrong in people. And I think that once they, it, all it takes is like, one, it, it takes one step. Like, okay, I'm just gonna get everything I want and everything, my faith to God. And God is going to show people in a different way. And what I've learned is sometimes God has to show you, like actually like show you a person's true colors in order for them to, or in order for you to remove them for your life. And that if they do you the dirtiest way, sometimes that's what has to happen. So you can just honestly see like, okay, this person is not meant for me, but I can learn from this person, even though we might not be cool anymore. Um, but it it's hard. It, I'm not saying that this faith with God is is easy, and this journey with God is just like okay, this this is a walk in the in the in the full forest with the flowers. But that's there's no other way to get connected to God, honestly. And certain people just aren't meant for your life. So I would just tell them, you might fall out with five, six, seven people, but at the end of the day, it's gonna be worth it. And when you actually realize that it's worth it, when you finally get to that moment, you're like, okay, I see why God did this, then everything else will fall into play. And you'll start to realize that God is not just doing this to be crucial, but he's doing this to follow this plan that I have for my life. Yeah. Um and, and what I what I like is God is showing us day by day as we stay connected to him because if another person helped you if another person made you change your life if another yep. person talked you in they'd be like you know what yeah tony did that for jayla but no god wants his name to be known his name to be great because yep. he don't want nobody else fingerprints yep. on you but him you know and um even you know with the youth you said something that was key earlier your eye gates your ear gates yep. you know watching certain stuff because you will start falling into what temptation is yep. you'll start falling and you won't trust what God is saying. And it's just like a friend. If I wanted to be a friend, I'm, I, I just joined this basketball team. I wanted to be a friend with somebody. I'm going to get their number. I'm going to form a relationship. And we can even say relationships. When you talk to somebody, you want to get to know them. You got to talk to them every day. You got to text them. You got to be intentional. I can't just not talk to you for two and three days and think we're supposed to grow closer the same way with God. You know, he'll show you. And like you said, it ain't for the week. It ain't, you know, going to be peaches and cream. But what he has for us in store, it's so much not? yeah, so much yeah. Anything that you could imagine, you might you might be depressed for these days because you lost your best friend. But it's at the end of the day, it's gonna be so worth it. You you might not know why at that moment, but it'll be worth it. Yeah, definitely. Um, how how has your family supported you? Because I know family is everything, and family means a lot. How has your family supported you, and how has you um connected to even you know be able to minister to your family or even grow alongside with them? Um, my family is very supportive. Like I send every time I watch a sermon, we have this family group chat, and I'll send like the video to the group, and or my mom will talk, and then my mom will say something that I watched. I'm like, oh, so you watched the sermon, and. Yeah. Older generation sometimes it's hard to like accept new like I don't know things that the generation does it's hard for them to accept so mm -hmm. now like I'm getting my granny to watch them I'm getting my grandpa to watch them and I'm just trying to get as many people as I can because like you said earlier like just because you believe in the church or you believe in God doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to heaven so mm -hmm. I've tried to not be judgmental with it but if like certain things like gossiping our family our family we don't gossip but we just we don't take anything serious so <laughs> even that was i'm trying to teach them like there's certain things that we can't do anymore and they've been very supportive of that um and they know how i was in the past i was just i was quote unquote this mean person so now that they see me change and they're like okay so god is really working in her and we're going to support her any way that we can um, my sister, I've gotten her into watching them. I'm trying to get my brother to watch them. He's still young though, but we're gonna get it. We're gonna get him. Yeah, we're gonna get him for sure. And but he he started to get a little bit more, but you know, he's only 19, you know, he's a boy. So just trying to get as many people, especially in my family, as possible, because at the end of the day, God wants us to pray for everybody, not just ourselves. He wants us to pray for our family, friends that might not be as close to God as we are. 
So yeah. just trying to get as many as many faith based people as possible. Yeah. Um. And this um. This this smart intelligent lady, um, she she posted this on her stat the other day. It said it's easy to trust God when things are going your way. However, faith is created at the lowest points of life. Yep. If yep. our faith was never tested, how would the Lord know how strong faith is? Yep. The Holy Spirit speak to you um, when you make posts like this? Did you yeah. even know this was your post? Yes, I did. Oh, okay. I, okay. I, have, I have a prayer book. And um, when I watch like videos and stuff, I write down what I'm doing. But I'll be, I was in the bed the other day. It was like 1030 at night. And I'm laying in the bed. I'm like, oh, my God, God is speaking to me. So I literally got my prayer book and I just have like prayer pages. And I, I literally it. write like what God is telling me at that moment. And it's crazy because it's not necessarily like a voice. Like you don't hear, I, well, I personally don't right now. I don't hear God saying like, Jayla, this is what you're supposed to write. It's more of like something like a random thought just comes to you. And it's something that you probably needed to hear at that moment. A download. So it's, it's crazy. It's yeah, crazy. A download. And, and I can see in your writing. That's why I said, which we're definitely going to have you on to talk about sports because, you know, um, you very, you know, you knowledgeable about the game. So, you know, we have different things and all like that. But even in this, when God is speaking and he speaks through your post, because when I see him and I'm coming, I said, that's what's needed. So you're shining your light by making that post because you know how many people, if they ain't told you, I don't care if we all older now, and they didn't looked up to you when you was in high school and looked up to you, still wonder what you're doing and all like that. Now they on Jayla post and they like, hold on, hold on, hold on. You have to be proud of the growth you made, regardless of what people see in you or not. That's the biggest thing. Look at yep. yourself in the mirror. So when you yep. put that on there, now they can see. Quit worrying about what this person say. Quit worrying yep. about what that person say. Look yourself in the mirror and give yourself affirmations. Yep. I am a child of God. I am more than a conqueror. I'm smart. I'm unique. I'm talented. I will do this. Yeah. Because you know, God lives through you. So if you're being a butthole to people then that's you're not living through god that's that's not what god wants you to do and at the end of the day like i said my main goal is to get into heaven and i can't get into heaven talk about people i can't get into heaven gossiping and just being like this such evil person i don't think people realize like we said just because you believe in god you have to put the work in you can't just be a butthole to people and treat people any type of way that's not living through god so you have to look yourself in the mirror and it's okay yeah. not everybody Perfect. It's okay to look yourself in the mirror and realize how messed up you are, but you also have to acknowledge why you are the way that you do. You, everybody went through something, you know? So we have to acknowledge that version of ourselves in order to grow as a better person. And I think that's what believing in God starts with. It's like, okay, I know I'm messed up, but at the end of the day, he's going to forgive me for what I did. I just got to put the work in and it, it'll all take place. Yeah. And I know a lot of time people, you know, everybody's faith is different. You know, yeah. you have to seek salvation for yourself. But what I be wanting people to know is you got to be careful saying I manifest this. I manifest that yeah. because a lot of times that's your will. A lot of yeah. times it ain't God's will. God ain't say this was supposed to happen. You spoke it or you went after it. And, and is you even listening to what God said? God ain't tell you to start that business. Why you start that business? Because you've seen all these other people do it. Yeah. I told you to go over there and connect with them kids. But yep. you 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 over here joining it. No, -uh, God wants you to do that. So sometimes you have to, you know, be careful. And what I, I like to see is people being strong for God, yep. going after God, allowing other people to see their growth despite my wrongs, despite what I did in the in the past, because a lot of times people want to look at your past and judge yep. you for that. But no, I've grown since then. I'm not yep. that same person. Yep. How do you handle how do you handle that? Being you know you're not in that uh mind frame no more. Um, I just like we said, I just stick to who I am now. Like I know the person that I was. And I'm not saying I'm just the perfect person ever. I still go through things, I still make mistakes, but one thing I had to realize is nobody's going to be more proud than your growth as you. So this next person might not know how you were before and they just know you now because people now they're like, I could never see you like that or whatever. But going through that made me the person I am today. So I still have to acknowledge my old version of myself and realize like what I've been through. And for somebody now to say like, I haven't really had an experience where somebody is like dodging my growth, but it's more of like, 
the devil. I feel like it's the devil and trying to get me back to my old way. So I have to just stand strong and say like, no, I've made this growth for this reason. And God is guiding me. And I, I had to go through that in order to become what I am and what I am going to continue to become. So I kind of just, like I, that's why I'm not on social media. And when I am on social media, I just post uh, as much golly as I can. I'm like, post my little memes all here and there. Mm -hmm. But I'm always like, okay, how can I be better? How can I become closer to God? Because any, like, anything that I do every day, I ask myself, will God like this? Will this enter me into the kingdom? So I can't even, it makes me like uncomfortable to sin now because I know what I'm doing. If I were to go in Walmart and steal something, I know that I'm I'm wrong and I am choosing to do this anyway, even though it's wrong. So yeah. I honestly, I just put God first in everything. And regardless of what people think, I know I he put me here for a reason and I'm going to do what he want me to do. So forget the haters and mm -hmm. <clears throat> if they say something else that's the devil <laughs> right. uh, before we get out of here can you speak something to the youth whatever comes to your heart um speak something to the youth um number one obviously always put god first and number two it's okay to be different. It's okay to not believe what everybody else is believing in. It's okay to not, it's okay, it's okay to stand out for doing the right thing. It's okay to not want to hang with this person that's doing the wrong thing. If you know you're doing the right thing and people are choosing to not be around you, then that should tell you something. We gotta, this generation has to stop hanging around people doing the wrong thing and telling, you know, this, it's a lot, but I, at the end of the day, I would just say, be true to yourself regardless and to always put God first. Yeah. Yeah, and trust yeah. yeah definitely. And like, um, it, this is much needed. It's a topic that, you know, needs to be talked about. That's why mm -hmm. I wanted to have you on. Um, because more people need to see people like me and you coming from Toledo, being able to be a part of sports, being able to grow up and be able to, you know, allow our fruits to be shown. It ain't that we're just talking and being extra. No, they're going to see our fruits. Yep. I'm proud of you, sis, for being strong, being courageous. I just want you to know that you're more than enough. You're needed. You're stronger than you ever will know. May God continue to grow you. May he continue to pour in you, give you new wine fresh fire, new anointing. May he download things inside you. May you dream dreams. May you have revelations. May you prophesy. Maybe you heal the sick. Maybe you be there. Maybe you be all what God has in store for you and just trust him and know that his will is better than everybody else's. And, you know, it's something greater on your life. I can see just by the way you post it, by the way you talk about it, to see the love that God got inside you. And may he continue to, you know, grow that and don't be scared. Don't be fearful. And like you said in your post, it might be them days that you down. It might be them days that you, your, your faith is trying and testing, but in our weakness, his strength is made, is made whole. So just know that. I appreciate that. I, that was that was needed. That was needed. <laughs> yeah, man, most definitely. So we thank you. Um, this is gonna be our first segment on the Kingdom Grind, um, and we want to continue to let the message be known and spread the word and allow people to know that you can walk in God and God is love. God wants you. Yep. He wants yep. you right where you are. Don't worry about what you done did. And I just smoked. I just right. drank. I just had sex. I just stole. I just keep. God wants right. you right where you at. For he can be able to talk to you, speak to you, and then even form a relationship between you and him. Yep, for sure. Yeah, yep. So we definitely going to have to do this definitely again. Um, Ready. And, uh, you know, continue to just spread it. For sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, Jayla Johnson. I'm just walking in my purpose on purpose I got the faith I know I'm worth it